That's correct. Now, you talked about the fact that one day you were invited to the White House. I'd like you to share that little story with our people. Many years ago, when security was not as big an issue as it is today, I was in Washington, D.C. with one of my daughters. A Secret Service agent was at a church where I was speaking, and he said, would you like to go to the White House tomorrow? He said, the president is out of town. This actually was the first George Bush who was president. So this was back in the 1980s. I said, sure. Well, we arrived there at the specific time, and we are invited to the White House. Of course, we connect with this agent. And uh, we come to those little huts that you see, and some of the agents that were there looked at me and looked at the agent we were with and said, if you're with him, that is with the Secret Service agent, you can go on in. Now, when we got to the White House itself, on the stairs, there were more guards. And they looked at me, and then they looked at who I was with. My daughter and I were with this uh, Secret Service agent, and they said, if you are with him, you can go on in. Now, when you go down the hallway and you get to the Oval Office, you find out that there's a guard right at the door. The guard was standing at attention but looked at us and said, in effect, you can go on in. Now, we couldn't go to the president's desk, but we were able to actually go into the Oval Office. Why? Because of who we were with. Now, I want you to use your imagination for just a moment. When you die, or let us suppose that we were to all die collectively in some way, and let us suppose that we are on our way to the heavenly city. And let us also suppose that there have been some angels that are accompanying us, but also Jesus meets us at the point of our death. And so we are walking toward the heavenly city with Jesus. And I want you to imagine that there are angels along the way guarding the heavenly city. And they see us and they say, are you with him? Go on in. Finally, in the distance, we see the glory of God. And God is more holy than we ever visualized him to be. And then we have a flashback because we remember all of our sins. And we remember the regrets and the life that we have wasted and the evil that we have done. And we say to ourselves, I can't go in. I can't go any farther. But then the angels say, you're with him. You're with Jesus. Go on in. And then if we can use our imaginations just a little farther, I can imagine that as we are there before the throne of almighty God, the holy God of the universe, who is localized there in heaven, and uh, he looks over the people, and uh, Jesus said, Father, these are the ones that I died for. These are the redeemed that belong to you and to me. And then the Father says, I have inspected them very carefully, and I find no fault in them. Why? Because they've been redeemed. Their debt has been paid, and as a result of that, they are welcomed into eternity forever. Let me ask you something. When you die, is Jesus going to be there for you? Is he going to say, come on in, be with me, or are you on your own? I urge you today to believe in the only one who is able to save you, the only one who is able to take us to the Father. He is there already, but all of us know that when we die, we are going into His presence, and because of Him, we have full acceptance. I want to repeat something I said earlier. The issue is not the greatness of your sin. I can imagine I'm talking to people who are criminals. The issue is not the greatness of your sin. 
God can receive you. The issue is the wonder of the redemption that Jesus purchased. We oftentimes sing that the vilest of sinners who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. That pardon is available to you.